Hey everybody and Merry Christmas. Uh, it's New Year's uh, Christmas Eve and man uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, spending some time with you today uh, talking about the heart of Christmas. I've selected a passage from the Old Testament which really uh, is kind of unusual maybe for Christmas Eve, but I hope you'll kind of get where I'm going with it. I've got three uh, photographs. These are screen captures from the YouTube uh, section of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, the original cartoon version. There's a point near the end of the program where the Grinch is finally caught on. He finally understands the meaning and the joy and kind of the, the depth of Christmas and his heart, which was so small and shriveled and so hard, begins to grow. And um, there's just this beautiful image of the heart gets so big, you know, it, it even busts out of the, the x-ray machine. And so it's just a beautiful expression that uh, Christmas is intended to change our, our hearts. There's just a fundamental question, I think that I want to address this morning, which is this, and I think the answer is Christmas. Maybe it's too corny or too sentimental, or, but it's certainly true. Here's the question. How does one change the human heart? Boy, there's a lot of stubborn people in this world, a lot of misguided people, a lot of folks going down the wrong path. Maybe uh, you've had periods in your life, maybe you're in one now where you're confused and you don't know which way to turn. How do you change the human heart? You've been praying for your child or grandchild. You've been hoping that a neighbor would finally kind of come around and be nice for once. How do you change the human heart? Well, God desperately wants to change human hearts. We see this back in the book of Ezekiel. This is a prophecy from many years ago. And I will give you a new heart, he promises to the people of God. Uh, they've gone through a hard time. They've been in exile. They've been disobedient. And God says, there's hope. A new heart is available to you. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh. And I will give you a, a heart of flesh, a, a beating heart, something that's alive, something that is responsive and I will put my spirit within you the Lord says and cause you to walk in my statutes and to be careful to obey my rules the Lord says to God's people then and boy this was a hoped for a promise that the Messiah would come and turn things around and how the Messiah does that is through the heart uh, I jotted down a list here in my notes uh, the kind of hearts that might be in church this Christmas Eve. The kind of hearts. Stony hearts and softened ones. Broken hearts and mended ones. Empty and full hearts. Anxious hearts, consoled hearts. Wayward hearts. Hopefully some inspired hearts. But how do we move from stony to soften, anxious, to consoled. Christmas. The whole point of Christmas is to allow the Lord to wiggle his heart into our lives and to change our hearts, to replace our stony, stubborn hearts with something that's alive and real and responsive to his leading. So uh, to get the answer to this question in more detail, I want us to look at a... Uh, a person, his name is Simeon. He was a first century temple worker, a prophet, who encountered Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus just a few days after Jesus was born. The story is told in Luke chapter 2. It's kind of the it's kind of like the coming out of Jesus. It's like his first appearance out in public. All right, let's look at this. I've entitled this part of the message. How I can be prepared to help change someone's heart. Now, maybe you're here today and you're thinking it's my heart that needs to be changed. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But first of all, uh, maybe the Lord's already done a work in your life. So your heart's already been 
touch, changed, inspired. How can you help others? Well, the story of Simeon helps us understand that. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout. Hey, God uses people who are following him to inspire others. You know, if you're, if you're way out in the field and the briars and you're stuck and you're not obedient to Jesus and your life's kind of a mess, um, it's going to be hard for God to use you to, to really inspire someone else. Maybe someone else will come into your life and remind you of how far you've drifted. But Simeon was ready. Simeon was prepared by living a life of righteousness and being devout. And he was waiting for the consolation of the Spirit. You know, his heart was set on the things of God. He was, uh, he was looking for peace and comfort and encouragement. You know, in our world today, there are people that are ready to provide stress and, and grief and drama and heartache and dissension. And they want to pull people apart. That wasn't Simeon at all. Simeon was all about bringing people together. He wanted to see the consolation, the comfort of God to fall upon the people of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see the Christ, that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So not only was he righteous and devout, not only was his attitude kind of towards comfort and peace and encouragement, but here was someone who was really in tune with the Holy Spirit. He was following the Spirit's leading. He was uh, engaged with God. The thing about a, a beating heart, that the difference between a, a stony heart from Ezekiel and that, that living, breathing heart, heart is responsiveness. Simeon is someone who's responding to the leading of God. And then he's also saying he would not see the death of Christ before he had seen he would not see his death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he had an expectation about the Messiah. He had an expectation that the Messiah would come, that the Messiah would uh, uh, come in his lifetime. He was, he was on the lookout. You know, he was trying to, is this the Messiah? Is this the Messiah? And of course, he recognizes that Jesus, this baby, is the promised Messiah. So there are some things you can do to be prepared to change someone's heart. Now, maybe you're not ready to lead someone else to a faith in Christ. Maybe you're listening today and your own heart needs to be touched. How can you be personally ready to experience a changed heart? So he, he came into the, in the spirit, into the temple. And when the parents brought in the, the child Jesus to do for him according to to the custom of the law. There were rituals and things to do. And Mary and Joseph were good Jewish parents and they wanted to do, to do the right thing. So I love this. He, he took Jesus up in his arms. The first thing I just want to encourage you to do this Christmas is just embrace Jesus. Take him up. Take him up on his promises. Take him into your life. Uh, take him into your gift giving. Uh, invite him to your Christmas dinner. Uh, engage with Jesus as best you can. Uh, I don't know uh, if you're the friend of Jesus that I am. I've known Jesus for many years, but I'm still learning more. Here's my kind of definition of what a Christian is. A Christian is someone who gives all of who he understands himself to be to all of who he understands Jesus to be. And certainly both of those things change. I learn more about myself and those things I have to give to Jesus. I learn more about Jesus. And so I embrace those things. How can I be ready to personally experience a changed heart? Take Jesus up, hold him close. Allow Jesus to be a bigger part of, of your life. Many blessed God. He just had this attitude, I think, Simeon did, that, uh, that God had his best interest in mind. He blessed God. He thanked God for what, uh, what was happening. I mean, it was just beautiful. He just, he just thought, God, you're awesome. And you're awesome in my life. I'm just going to tell you about it. Maybe, uh, maybe praying 
maybe talking to God this Christmas is something that would be beneficial for you if you want to draw closer to him. Simeon sure did. And he said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. And here's the third thing I think that would be really helpful to be personally experiencing the Christ of Christmas is to engage with God's word. He uses a phrase here, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, which comes right out of 49, Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 6. Verse 6, is he. It, this is a direct quote from verse 6. Here, Simeon is someone who who is exposed to the word of God. He reads God's word. He's memorized God's word. Now you might think, oh, well, he's a temple worker. He's a prophet, of course. Well, but it's for anybody. Anyone can experience God's word. You know, uh, back in the Middle Ages, before the printing press, back in the days of Simeon, even in the days of Jesus, you know, there weren't Bibles laying around on every coffee table or in every hotel, hotel room. No, the, the word of God that was written down was precious and treasured. And so people had to go to great lengths to get a copy or to read it or to hear it read. Not now. You can open it, your phone and have it on an app. You can go to any store. Even Walmart sells Bibles. They're everywhere. And so I just encourage you to get into God's word because that's what Simeon used to kind of prepare his heart for the coming of Christ. And if you're going to have Christ really show up in your life during Christmas in, in 2024, it's going to require getting into God's word. Now, understand what knowing Jesus can bring into your heart. Here's Simeon. He's continuing. He's, he's got the baby Jesus in his hand and he's just holding him and he's, he's blessed God. He's quoted this verse from the book of Isaiah. And he says, and his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed. Uh, the reason Christ in Christmas is the answer to this question. Remember, we're, we're thinking about this question. How do you change the human heart? Jesus is the appointed one to do that. Jesus is the one that answers Ezekiel's question. How are we going to go from stony to fleshly, stony to living, stony, stubborn, closed to responsive, open, uh, living. And the answer is through his appointed Messiah. Uh, for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. Jesus was going to put a mark in the ground and said, here is what God wants you to do. And it's to follow him to allow his words to live richly in your life. And man, it's controversial, isn't it? I mean, Jesus, you're either for him or against him. It's kind of hard to be in the middle of the road when it comes to the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord, the Savior of the universe. And so how can we have our hearts changed? What? Jesus, through his word, is going to uh, appear and challenge and confront and expose us. Look at this next part. So that through him, many hearts may be revealed. Jesus had a way, as we read in the New Testament, walking from place to place. I mean, he drew great crowds. But there was a point when many of people walked away. They had kind of had enough of Jesus and Jesus had revealed uh, what it means to follow God. And they were like, ah, I'm not into that. And, and maybe, maybe that's you. I hope not. One thing Jesus uh, permitted people to do was walk away. And here at our church, you know, it's sad when we see people. Uh, they come and they learn about, they investigate, investigate Jesus. And they get to say, you know, that's just not for me. Um, of course, there's consequences to that, eternal consequences. Uh, we, we hope that everyone comes to a saving knowledge of Jesus. But definitely what, 
what a changed heart will require is making a decision about who the Lord is in our lives. Here's a question to uh, consider. What should we do with this question about changing hearts and minds? And I encourage you to do exactly what Mary did, to treasure and ponder. Luke 2.19, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Think about uh, all that you've learned about Jesus during the Christmas season. You know, uh, the, the miraculous, the visits of the angels, the shepherds, the magi, the, the way God uh, looked over Mary and Joseph during those first two years, the, the perils that they faced and how God led them through it. Mary treasured all those things. And pondering, that's thinking deeply about it, right? So really consider, has Jesus changed my life? Is he a part of my everyday walkabout world? I want to close with a prayer this morning. And it says, see, insert in our bulletin. It's a long prayer. Normally my prayers are short, but I have a Christmas prayer for you today. So would you bow your heads, please? Bow your head as I finish up the sermon today with a Christmas prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather in the warmth of this Christmas season, our hearts are filled with gratitude for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the quiet of this holy night, we come before you with awe and wonder, reflecting on the miraculous story of Christ's birth. Lord, we thank you for the profound hope and joy that Jesus brings into our lives. In a world sometimes filled with darkness, his light shines brightly, illuminating the path to salvation, redemption, and everlasting love. Oh God, as we celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace, we are reminded of the words of Mary, who treasured and pondered the extraordinary events surrounding the arrival of Jesus, like her. May we too treasure in our hearts the gift of your Son and ponder the profound truths that he reveals. In the midst of the busyness of the season, grant us grace to pause and reflect on the significance of Christ's birth. May his presence in our lives bring hope to the hopeless, joy to the sorrowful, and peace to the restless. We acknowledge, Lord, that through Jesus, our hearts can be transformed. His teachings inspire us to love one another, to seek reconciliation, and to live in the light of your grace. May our lives reflect the hope and joy that come from knowing him. Lord, we embrace the transformative power of your love. As we exchange gifts and share meals with loved ones, let us remember the greatest gift of all, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, the bringer of hope and joy, whose birth we celebrate with glad and grateful hearts. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone, and I hope that the Lord blesses you this season and into the next year.